Hello everyone, it's Leon here from Games Radar, and I'm joined by Jen Simpkin, staff writer for Official PlayStation Magazine. Hello. And we have both played uh, No Man's Sky, and I say played, they gave us both about half an hour, didn't they? They did indeed. I was a bit cheeky and pushed it a little bit further. But it's uh, still, for a game that that big, it felt like, there's loads of new stuff to talk about, but I felt like I didn't really get a feel for what it could do, um, because it was just enough time to basically wander around a few pink space dinosaurs and maybe fly to another planet mm. but this thing is supposed to have like 18 quintillion planets or yes. something like that yes but we have seen uh, so there's new features yes there are there so are we've plenty got of new features new NPCs and alien races mm -hmm. and you want to explain a little bit sort of about how that works yeah so that was really interesting uh, to me when I sort of came across this sort of television headed Corvax scientist and I was like who's this and I kind of t uh, turned to Sean Murray who's lead developer yeah. I was like hang on you said that there would definitively be no NPCs uh, and he was like well we didn't want to over promise um, so yeah anyway so in the uh, there are buildings on many of the planets um, obviously depending on how they procedurally generate yeah. um, and they're occupied by NPCs of, of several different races I think in the game yeah. uh, so I met this kind of robot dude who uh, was sort of uh, aligned with like explorer races so it meant he was a little bit more cerebral yeah uh, and he enjoyed me because I wasn't really shooting animals so he was like ah you're you're an interesting person you're interested in gathering data not just like shooting everything yeah so they have different sort of um we've only seen this Corvax guy but they say one that some will be more like war some will like trading some exactly. will be more sort of like technology and, and yeah so depending on how you play the game and there are several ways to play the game so you can you can be mostly kind of an explorer just focusing on gathering data or you can be a trader um, a fighter and you want to kind of get involved with like factions and, and wars um, and the NPCs will actually react differently to you and offer you sort of different yeah. interaction options depending on on how their sort of philosophy aligns with yours I suppose. And this is something I'd like to see I'd like to get a longer sort of hands-on time with it to see how that kind of pans out because at mm. one point I got attacked so I saw you see these sort of incredible monsters like this big kind of giant gorilla thing with like fish fins on its arms there was like a pink dinosaur there was like a blue bird troll thing but at one point I got attacked by kind of like a like it was just like a mushroom like it was just hopping around on this one foot wow um but it started attacking me so i shot back and then then the sentinels so all the planets have sentinels to protect the planet so they started attacking me and i was kind of like well i don't know how to deal with this do i start attacking them because then it escalates do i in the end I, I ran away yeah um but then also i got into another fight somewhere else and so i don't know how how well that works yet like whether it takes a long time do you get a star rating is you do. It's it's you... like a wanted level, right? Yeah. Like in GTA. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Um, there's because there's ways to kind of get into buildings where you shouldn't really be, but yeah. there might be kind of like interesting loot in there that you need. So obviously these sentinels are around to sort of protect that. So if you're trying to kind of get into the building by like blasting it open with your your multi tool, kind of your like laser yeah. gun, um, you're gonna get a wanted level. Um, but I'm pretty sure there are sort of different kind of sneakier ways to get into the building. Um, um, uh, which the, kind of the devs were sort of hinting at. Yeah. Um, so I think there are ways to really kind of avoid stuff like that and probably myriad opportunities to, to play it in different ways so that you don't have to antagonise things and, and fight back if yeah. you don't want to. And there's, there's a huge upgrade system as well. You mentioned a multi-tool. So, I mean, I think at one point I upgraded it with a couple of things. I had to upgrade um, part of my ship because to get a jump drive to get mm. far between the planets a lot faster. So you're collecting all these minerals. Some of them are are real so it's like carbon and silicon yeah four eight i think was another some of them are kind of magical but you yeah. collect all this stuff and you can slot in all these different tool upgrades ability upgrades um there's different different planets have different things like there'll be caustic ones toxic ones uh cold ones so you need to have the right shield exactly so you've got a shield level right yeah. so um i mean we uh i started on a on a kind of a really cold planet it was like minus 200 yeah. degrees uh so i was kind of getting quite hypothermic quite mm. quickly uh and sean was like okay you're gonna need to kind of look around for some resources quickly to get some silicon to charge your shield yeah um so yeah i think i think kind of there's a crafting system as well so it, it'll be about like resource management as well and like a lot about survival yeah. and it's quite i mean it's an open end goal isn't it because the only thing they've kind of discussed is the idea of getting to the center of the universe and they've <laughs> not really talked about what that means I, there's that weird 
diamond, isn't there? They keep using all the art. Yeah, I that's, if... that's the atlas. So that's where oh, all, right. your, all your information that you collect on animals uh, and, and plants kind of goes to. Um, but yeah, so you've got this goal, basically, of getting to the centre of the universe, which is what upgrading your, your multi-tool and kind of learning to survive on planets uh, is all about, so that you can be in the best position possible yeah. to perhaps make your way to the centre of the universe, and if you want to. And that's part of the kind of the gear gating, isn't it? It's the, the, the closer you get to the universe, the tougher it gets. So Yeah, I think... For from what from what I chatted to them about, um, there is sort of there's lots of little kind of code based hints that happened when you're getting to the centre of the universe, where the the universe procedurally generated as it is is creating patterns to start to tell you like okay perhaps you're getting closer to discovering yeah. something quite big about this universe here so yeah so that's kind of your goal um but talking to me the developers were like we'd be equally happy if people were just upgrading their stuff yeah. to be able to survive for longer and, and and just keep going on and on and using planets as stepping stones to find that beautiful paradise that we've yeah. seen in so many of the pictures Okay, so that's No Man's Sky, which is out in June. If you'd like more information, there is some on the site at gamesradar.com and the issue of official PlayStation magazine with No Man's Sky on the cover will be out on Tuesday the 8th of March. Don't forget, if you like this video, to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions.